After nine games in the current La Liga season, this Las Palmas side are sitting broke bottom at three points only. So today it is the task of Rebuild Sombrero to step in at Las Palmas on the island and bring success. Not only making Las Palmas the best team in Spain, but the best team in Europe. As you can see, there are a whole heap of players out of position already. I don't like that. So we need to get to work in this team. We have, of course, the likes of Alberto Molero, an absolute world beater, a very big talent, 20 years old only, 77 overall. We have Loyodis, the Frenchman, 23, 75. As I said, I have to figure out something, especially here in center midfield. Both of them are on minus two, respectively minus one. Silesen in net is already 35. We have a quite old team in certain positions, and then again, a few talents like Loyodis, like Molero, and like this man, Marmol. However, what I don't understand is why Vallet, the goalkeeper, Vallet, is not in net. I'm, of course, gonna put him in here. I forgot that he plays here. I've just bought him in one of my previous rebuilds, and he's, of course, better and younger, much younger than Silesen. What I can already tell you is that uh, Sandro isn't really filling me with confidence up top. There is uh, young Fabio Silva on the bench, as well as Oli McBurney, of course, a uh, Premier League proven player. He played for Sheffield United, got relegated last season. I'm gonna use the gig and pressing style of play just to see how this works. I've heard a lot of things about gig and pressing. It seems to be overpowered, uh, according to a lot of people, so let's see how this goes. We only got 5 billion in our budget, that's after spending a bit of money on extending contracts, so not a lot we can do unless we find solutions on the market to sell. What we can do, however, is go in for a player who was already at our club. He was on loan from Wolves, and so that's why we swooped in for him. I am, of course, talking about Fabio Silva, the striker, coming in from Wolves for 2 million plus Manu Fasta, who we didn't really need anymore. We have made a little bit of money selling Benito to Luton Town for 1.5 million. Cardona, a third string striker for 2.2 million to, I think, France, that is, Montpellier. Sandro, as I said, we didn't really need him anymore. He goes to Sevilla for 9 million. And Javi Munoz goes for 6.5, good money there, to Vitoria Guimaraes. He was already 29 as well. Which means that we have somewhat of a decent budget, 22 million to go in for, maybe a couple more players. First, what I'm going to do, though, is sell now a scout, our default scout, 5-star, 4-star, Molina, for 9 months to Spain, to uh, find us a few talents, I'm not really sure what to do here. Maybe a few offensive talents, like a left-winger, a striker, a right-winger. One of those talents that were at the club, but al already only on loan, just like Fabio Silva, is a center midfielder from Sporting, he came. By the name of Dario S. Hugo, coming in for 3.2 million at market value 5, so we've done a very good job here. The third and final signing of season number 1 for Las Palmas is going to be a new centre-back. He's only 20 years old, 76 rated it is, Zeno Debas joining us from Sporting. I'm gonna give the starting spot to Debas, who is only 20, 76. Suarez is also 76, while he's 11 years older. Campania goes into that camp spot. I've, of course, changed up the formation into a more offensive one. Two CMs, one cam, and then a front three of Molero, Silva, and Marvin. We have also Jan Uzai, who is only on loan, though, and he's already 29. He comes from the bench. Of course, in real life, this team, without the signing of the bus, are rock bottom of La Liga. I'm still, though, of the opinion that we've brought in three young players... And we've got a few exciting ones. Now, in the bust, of course, Marmol, the centre-back duo that could hold the entire rebuild. Loyodis could be there as well. Silva and, and uh, Molero, as well as maybe even Marvin. I have changed a few for positions, like Esugo, who has gone up to a 76 from centre midfield to CDM. Gilles goes up to 72 from a 69. Peginio is a 76 now. And Marvin, 73, I think he was that already before. Janusai also has gone up, I think. In our youth intake, we found four interesting players. One, uh, two actually right-wingers, one left-winger and a striker. 
Except for the 14 year old, we are going to promote Diaz, Ray, Sandoval and loan them out. We've also sold Julian Herzog to Hoffenheim for 3.5 million. I've also converted Jose Campania, the 31 year old, from ACM to ACM and he's gone up to a 78. It's the end of the season number one and we've just about managed to stay up. 16th spot, 40 points, just two points ahead, uh, ahead of relegation actually, ahead of Espanyol. Still better, I think, than Las Palmas are doing in real life, but it was really, really tight. The Copa España goes to Barcelona on penalties over Real Madrid. We've actually been to the semis, but we've got obliterated 10-2 on aggregate by Barcelona. Oh my, oh my. I mean, Fabio Silva to buy him was the absolute best decision we've ever made. 22 years of age, 77 overall, 26 goals for him. 17 goals for Adan Januzaj, who is on loan to us from Sevilla. 12 goals and 12 assists for Campania, we changed to a cam. Peginio with 7 goals. Molero only with 4 goals, 5 assists. He needs to step his game up. Not a bad growth by any stretch. We have Marvin, who is a bit of a concern. He didn't grow a lot, but Silva grew to a 77. Molero to a 79. We have a steady midfield. Loyodis 76, Kirian 78, and Campania 78. And then... Uh, very good centre-back partnership in Debas Marmol. A, a fantastic already nearly world-class goalkeeper in uh, Valles 84. Munoz 75 and Rosada 71 are going to need to be looked at in the future. Within one season we have tried to change the culture within that football club. Rejuvenating the squad, bringing in a couple of young players, giving contracts to the loanees. And we are in 16th, but I'm sure we can improve in the upcoming seasons. Now, to start off with, in season number two, we've sold some players like Corcas to uh, Union saint gilloise in Belgium for 1.6 million. Victor Puig, another goalkeeper, goes to Norwich for 820k. Ivan Gil goes to Southampton for 4 million. Kaba to uh, El Itifak for 1.1. 1.8 we get for Fabio Gonzalez, who goes to Lorient. And then Basinga to Cincinnati, Peginho for 7.5 to Monaco, Rosada to Getafe, Clement to Venezia, and we loan out our youth academy prospect, Adrian Sandoval. Which means that we have quite of a stacked budget here, 37 million to go in for three players. Now to start off with, we have to sort out that right back position. I didn't upgrade on it last season, but now I finally done it. Going in for the right back from Juventus in this save, he already played in La Liga once. For 12 million he comes in from Juve. After El Hilali, we bring in another man for that right side, but this time on the wing. A right winger playing in Spain for Girona. We have of course lost Adnan Janusai, and I wasn't really confident in Marvin. So we've got it for Yazer Asprila from Girona for 9.7 million. As a final signing this season, with our last scraps of money, I've gone in for an Italian centre midfielder. Who will pr most probably start, he's only 23, he's an AS Roma outcast. It is Eduardo Bove coming in from Roma for 14.4 million. I have once again decided to change the formation to a holding 4-3-3 with two CMs and one CDM. Give us a little bit more strength in... The defensive midfield. I think I'm gonna let uh, Esugo start as well over Loyodic, who uh, most probably will then come from the bench. He's a little bit slow in growth, so that's maybe the best thing we can do at this moment in time. El Hilali, of course, on the right back spot. Aspria on the right wing. We've really rejuvenated that team once more. Bovi in the center midfield spot. He's 23 77, the highest rated player we've put in. I'm really excited. Guys, something terrible happened. Al Alvaro Valles' release clause has been met by Bayern Munich. So he had joined Bayern in the... He will join Bayern actually when the transfer window opens. That is something hey, really guys, bad. We've had a brilliant season this one. We will play European football in season number three. That is crazy. Fifth spot, 66 points. So we went from 16th to 5th, 68 goals scored. 50 conceded is still a bit uh, much, but still, 66 points is great. Real Madrid win the Copa España over Osasuna. This time we've only made it into the round of 32 before getting knocked out by Real Madrid. 
Let's have a first glance at the Champions League, where PSG defeated Arsenal this season. The Europa League, where most probably we will be playing next season, was won by Aston Villa over Galatasaray from Turkey. And finally, Chelsea brings some silverware to England, defeating Wolfsburg in the Conference League final. 21 goals by our new signing, Aspria. That's what I call a signing. 18 goals in 42 for Silva, 9 goals in 34 for Campania, and then 8 goals for Captain Kirian. Maybe even more important than our league finish is the improvement in the squad, and I don't really see why we've done that well, because with a midfield, with no one in their 80s, that is a very good job that we've done. Moleiro, of course, 82 rated. Munoz might be replaced next season. He's 31, 76, the weakest link in our team. Kirian, I'm not so sure about. Maybe one more season. Maybe he will get replaced. But we certainly need to replace Alvaro Valles. who will go to Bayern with a good amount of cash coming along with it. Fifth place. It's still a bit surreal that we finished that high in the second season with the signings we made. Round of 32 Copa España. But the most important thing is that we will play European football. So we need to stack ourselves up, our squad as well, if we want to do well in the third season. We have about 113 million to go in for new players in this season, but our first signing is going to be a free agent, a goalkeeper. I couldn't really pass up on that opportunities from Finland. Of course, we needed a replacement for Alvaro Valles, and this guy does this justice. It's Ekli Leo from Finland, maybe the Lukas Radetzky region. I don't know. He's 20 years old and he's 81 rated. Our second signing of the season is a new left back. Of course, we needed one. He's 24-81 from the French leagues, from Brest. His contract was expiring in 11 months. It is Bradley Loco coming in for 28 million. We still have about 80 million to spend on one final player, so a big player could come in to play for us in the Europa League this season. For all you people thinking we'd get in a big player, I have to disappoint you. We didn't have a backup goalkeeper, I didn't check that once again, but this time I'm not going to make the same mistake that I did a couple of weeks ago, when of course one season got us relegated because of not having a second keeper. That's why I've gone in for Jonas Urbik, the German goalkeeper from AC Milan in this day for 17.3 million. We have certainly improved the team in one position, Loco at left back, replacing of course uh, Munoz who has now gone onto the bench. Leo is the goalkeeper, he's of course a downgrade on uh, the departing Valles, but still, we have Urbig on the bench, who is 22-77, a very, very good backup option, the German goalkeeper. Otherwise, we couldn't really improve this starting eleven, especially the midfield. Let's see how this goes this season, hopefully. Season number three is done and dusted, and we finish in eighth place this time. A big bit of a drop-off here, 54 points. 63 for Sevilla in 5th, Atletico Madrid are the champions, very tight title race ahead of Barcelona. Copa del Rey, the Atletico Madrid do the double over Real Madrid. We have been knocked out by Sporting Gijón in the round of 16 on penalties. So guys, we've actually not been in the Europa League, we've been in the Champions League, I've completely missed that guys. 20th we finished, so we went to the playoff round. Where are we? We lost to Leverkusen 5-3 on aggregate. The Europa League went to Besiktas over Spurs. And finally the Conference League goes to Greece, to Panathinaikos over Newcastle. The stats are not looking that bad. 28 goals for Fabio Silva who has grown to an 84, 14 and 14 for Aspria, 13 and 12 for Molero and 7 goals for Bove. Of course the team is not that happy. That I can tell you for sure, but it has grown well. Molero at an 87, of course, as I said, Silva 84, Aspria to an 81. We have even Kirian up to an 80, Asugo 80, Bove 81. So everyone in that midfield is now in their 80s, even in the defense and, of course, the goalkeeper. Everyone in the squad, in fact. Maybe it is the tactical vision that's a bit letting us down. So I'm going to go to wing play for the foreseeable future. Not that great of a season, I have to admit. But uh, yeah, we have, of course, we had qualified for the Champions League where we finished in the top 24 in 20th place and then went to the playoff where we got knocked out to Leverkusen. Let's see if we can 
qualify once again for the Champions League in season number four. It's season number four and finally we've gone in for our first very big player. We'll change our midfield. It is Ryan Gravenberch. His contract was expiring at Liverpool. We've got him in for 50 million on the dot. We'll also have a couple of players, four players actually, retiring at the end of the season. Campania Suarez, McBurney and Munoz all retiring at the end of this season. We sign one more big player this transfer window. It is a centre-back, Jurian Timber. His contract was expiring at Arsenal. We bring him in for 25 million. He's 26, 82 rated. Gravenberch gets, of course, into the team over Kirian, the captain who gets now replaced. Bove is still there. He's as highly rated as Kirian, but of course, about six years younger. We have Timba who gets into the squad as well. Ahead of Marmol, he's 26. Marmol, let's see, is also 26, but he's one lower rated, so that's why uh, Timba gets in. Leo still in goal at 82. Eli Lali right back. A very good team, and I'm expecting us, with the arrival certainly of Gravenberch, but also of Timba, which of course uh, enables us to make our bench stronger with Marmol now on there. I expect us to qualify for some sort of European football in for season. Season four one. is finished, and we are in fifth place, 61 points. Once again in fifth, that is not a bad season. 84 points for Real Madrid, who are the champions, ahead of Barcelona and Atletico. Athletic Bilbao defeat Barcelona to win the Copa de España. We have made it into the semi-finals, actually, where we got narrowly knocked out by the eventual winners, Athletic Bilbao. Manchester City defeat Real Madrid to win the Champions League. Man United win the Europa League over Fiorentina. We were actually in the Conference League, I didn't even know that, but we finished in 20th place, a very poor display. We had to go to the playoff round where we defeated Storm Graz, 3-1. And then in the, the round of 16, we got knocked out, we got smashed by Roma, who in the end win the Conference League as well over Salzburg. The growth of the squad is notable, you can see Molero at a 90, Silva at an 86. Uh, we have Esugo 81, Gravenberg 86, Boveven 83, they bust 87 but he's very unhappy, I don't know what happened there. Leo had an 83, uh, Urbig 81 even, the backup goalkeeper and Marmol still had an 81. We are looking at 38 goals for an 86 rated Silva, 21 for Aspria, 17 and 16 for Molero, he's now coming in clutch finally at 24. 13 goals even for Gravenberg, the signing of the season. Very good season number four. Let's jump into season number five. We will have around 87 million for season number five. And we will be in the UEFA Champions League. Actually, once again, as we finished in fifth place. In season number five, I want to begin to lay the foundations on a very good squad. Not only a first 11. I, we have, I need to have a lot of depth in the squad. That's why I go in for an Englishman for the left midfield slash left wing. In Morgan Rogers from Aston Villa, his contract was expiring. We get him in for 25 million. Next player is yet another one who used to play in the Premier League for Brighton. Now he plays for Napoli. Also, the contract who was expiring in 12 months. It is the Scottish midfielder Billy Gilmer giving us more depth in midfield. 19 million. A bargain deal. Our final signing of season number 5 is a new fullback because we didn't have any real decent fullbacks at the club and Munoz is going to retire at the end of the season the only rotational fullback we had and so we have gone in for Elias Yela in real life he plays for Galatasaray here he played for Athletic Club 30 million he cost us we have Diaz and Sandoval both of our youngsters who have returned from loan they could go out again though I'm not so sure yet Rogers have has been bought just about just yet 25 years of age, 81 rated, Yelad is there as well, he's a right back, can also play on the left, 25, 81 from Denmark, and then the Scottishman, Billy Gilmore, 27 year old, 81 rated, we didn't touch this the halfway level. point of season number 5, and we are sitting in 4th place, behind just Real Madrid, Atletico, and Valencia, who have had the rise to the top as well. In the Champions League, we finished in 16th place, which means that we go to the playoffs, and we will face Benfica 
in those play for the playoff round. The ratings are looking absolutely fire. Just look at that front three. 91, 88, 87 rated. They buzz this 88 at the back as well. Let's go to the Estadio da Luz in Lisbon and get a result. And we do. Gravenberg and Moleiro score our goals. We are up for the second leg. Second leg is on the way. Let's get this over the line with against the Portuguese outfit Benfica. And we do two all. Yela and Fabio Silva with our goals. We are through to the round of 16. We do face Ajax in the round of 16 at the Estadio de Gran Canaria in Las Palmas. Can we get a first important vital advantage here? Yes, it's a 3-2 win. And it's a Fabio Silva hat-trick that gives us the advantage for the second leg in Amsterdam. Can we hold on in the Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam? That is the big question. And the answer is yes, on penalties as well. We've lost the game to one, but on penalties, I mean, what a game that was. Silva with the goal in the 90 minutes, they scored twice. But then in the end, all of our penalty takers, apart from Fabio Silva, our best player, scored their goals and we are through. In the quarterfinals, it will be a matchup against the other Dutch team in the competition, PSV Eindhoven. Is this a Dutch run? First away from home. And we lose 2-1 away to PSV. Molero scores, but we do taste defeat in the Netherlands. Can we turn this around and go to the semi-finals? Or will it be the end of the road here at home? Against PSV it is the end of the road. We lose 2-1 to PSV. That is a disappointment, I'm not going to lie. 4-2 on aggregates. They go through to the semis. We are out. This is the end of Season 5 and finally we've made it into the top 3. A second place just behind Real Madrid. 13 points in the end is a lot. But in a bunch of teams who are on 73 or 72 points. Look at this. Las Palmas 73. Valencia 73. Atletico 72. Barcelona 72. We've made it into second place. We are the best of the rest. Real Madrid lose the Copa de España against Atletico Madrid on penalties. We have made it into the semi-finals, but narrowly got knocked out by Atletico. And in the end, it is Real Madrid getting their revenge in the Champions League final over Atletico, defeating their city rivals 3-1. The Europa League goes to Roma over Club Bruges in the final. And the Conference League final gets won by Valencia, another Spanish team, over Zurich. 33 goals again for Silva. What the player this is. He's on loan, of course, in real life at Las Palmas. I didn't need to do a lot just by him, and he's absolutely delivered. 24 goals and 11 assists for Spria. He's delivered as well, just like Molero. 24 and 14. And then there is a big drop-off to Gravenberch, who's a very steady midfielder. They were 27 already, 88 rated. I mean, this team is coming together nicely. A few lower-rated players like El Hilali. Maybe an upgrade in midfield for either Sugo or Bove. But otherwise, the front three is perfect. The goalkeeper is good. We'll have a few contracts running out, like Oli McBurney, who will, uh, of course, go away from the club. But otherwise, in season number six, we have to attack once more the Champions League. Maybe even the La Liga title. Let's see. We've been attributed about 115 million for season number six, and so we go in for a capable backup striker to Silva. A man from PSG in this save in real life. He plays for Bas he played for Barcelona and now plays for Chelsea. It is the 23-year-old Marc Guyou coming in from PSG for 34 million. His contract was expiring. The second and final player we go in in season number six is a new central midfielder. As I said, I wanted a little bit of an upgrade in midfield. And that's why I've gone in for the Croatian centre midfielder region, Milan Novak, for 58 million, plus Kirian from Torino. So Kirian goes out, but Milan Novak, a 23-year-old, probably the region of either Ivan Rakitic or Luka Modric, comes in. Which means that we have a very narrow squad depth. Guyu comes in at 23.82, a good backup striker. Of course, I rated the Dan McBurney. But in midfield, we have made the biggest upgrade in, of course, where is he? Novak, 23-86. He's really the next level player we needed in that position to challenge for both La Liga and the Champions League. Bovi, a very good backup player now. Gilmore on the bench still for that CDM spot. We have Yela, the starter at right back. Loco is at left back. Eli Lali, the backup for both of those positions. And then we have Timbrand, Debust. 
Give us that an 89, by the way. So, what lads, at the halfway point of the season in the league, we are once again in second place. On the same points, actually, as third and fourth place, Atletico and Villarreal. Real Madrid are behind. Guys, we have been embarrassed in the Champions League. One win only in eight games. Eight points, 27 in the league table. Well, at the end of season six, a bit of a drop-off. Still in fourth place, though. Uh, Barcelona are the champions ahead of Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid in third. We will, of course, once again play Champions League football in Season 7. And we have won our first trophy on penalties against second division club Zaragoza in the Copa de España. The Champions League goes to Man City over AC Milan. The Europa League goes to Benfica who break their trophy curse over Villarreal. And finally, the Conference League goes to Real Sociedad over Fiorentina. 25 goals, a bit of a drop off for 90 rated Fabio Silva, 23 and 10 for Aspria, 18 for Molero, and 6 and 13 for Gravenberg. This may be a hot take, but I don't think it is. In my opinion, this team is too good to uh, finish in fourth place. Actually, we should finish a bit higher. That's at least my opinion. Let's see what we can do in the next season if we can improve this squad, because actually. Look at that front three. I mean, nobody can beat that front three, actually. Maybe a better center back. Maybe, I, I'm not very sure. Maybe a better right back. Maybe a better CDM. Let's see in season seven. Season seven, and we buy a new right back. He's 24, a region from Croatia, 85 rated. In Branislav Jelavic, who comes in from Roma for 35 million, plus Omar El Hilali, who didn't really develop as much as good as I would have liked him to. Our second and probably maybe final signing of the season will be a new goalkeeper, a world-class one, 90 rated, 32 years old. It is Gregor Kobel entering the offices of Las Palmas for 24 million he came in, plus Jonas Urbig, our backup goalkeeper. Jelavic, 24-85, goes on to that right-back spot. Kobel goes into the net, he's 5 higher rated than Leo. But the one thing I'm a bit unsure about is our squad tap because we really don't have a lot of that. Rogers is the only winger we have. We have Gilmore and Bove in midfield. Guyu as the backup striker is alright. But I really do believe that we need at least one more winger. And well, as a backup winger, right winger, I've brought in a replacement for Aspria if he ever gets injured or suspended. Going in for Captain America himself, Christian Pulisic from Bologna in this save for 40 million. Pulisic goes on to the bench. At least we have one reserve now. That's not too bad. Rogers on the reserve. He's 27-82. But our squad is now very good. And even in depth, it's looking quite well, This is something to be happy about. 52 points at, after 21 games in La Liga. 7 points clear at the top of the table. Ahead of Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. And not only that, we've also finished in the top three of the UEFA Champions League league table in third place. 17 points, just one point behind both Leipzig and a surprising AZ Alkmaar. In the round of 16, we will face Brighton and Hove Albion, first away from home. Look at the ratings on these players. 94, 91, 93 front three. Even the midfield is fantastic now. Let's see if we can do it at the Emirates. Amex Stadium. It's only a draw for the first leg. Only a draw. Molero with our goal, but Fofana cancels it out. Second leg of the round of 16. Will we finally overcome Brighton at home? Yes, it's a 2 0 win. Fabio Silva and Molero with our goals. We are off to the quarterfinals once again. Quarterfinal time it is in Rome against Lazio in the Stadio Olimpico. Let's see how we get away here. In our away fixture, it's a one all draw. Fabio Silva and Mika Gotz with the goals. Time for the second leg at home at the Estadio de Gran Canaria against the Italian outfit Lazio. Can we overcome them? Yes, absolutely comfortably. Aspria with a brace. As well as Fabio Silva coming in clutch 4 1 on aggregate. Off to the semi finals. To the semi finals we go with a game first at home against the Italian giants AC Milan this time. Let's see if we are good enough to overcome the Italians. It's a 2-1 win. Fabio Silva and Dan Alberto Moreiro come back from behind. We go to Milan with a one-goal advantage. Can Milan overcome the deficit or will we go to the final? We will go to the final. Loco with the only game of goal of the game. It's been a Loco rebuild and we go to the Champions League final defeating the Italian giants Milan. 
I mean, of course, in the Champions League final, we will face Real Madrid on the 31st of May 2031. Let's have a look at the other competitions first. Wolfsburg win the Europa League over Club Bruges on penalties. The Conference League goes to Augsburg, a second German club winning in La Liga. We finally win the 10 points ahead of Atletico Madrid as well. Real Madrid in third, Barcelona all the way down in fifth. The Supercopa goes to Barcelona of Atletico Madrid. We have been knocked out by Atletico in the semis. And finally, the Copa de España. We couldn't defend our title there. Real Madrid win that over Sevilla, whilst we've been knocked out quite early in the round of 16 on pens by Mallorca. We've done a remarkable job and it reflects on the stats. 45 goals for Silva, 31 for Molero with 16 assists, 22 and 19 for Aspria and even midfielder Gravenberg with 11 and 10. 9 goals for Novak. And the squad is looking absolutely menacing as well. Esugo the lowest rated player alongside Timba but both 85 rated, even the bench is looking very fine. A very good squad to have, a very good first 11. A lot of players in their 90s even, especially the front three, all of them in the 90s. We have Gravenberch 90, Novak 88, Debast at the 92, even goalkeeper Kobel has grown at the age of 33 to a 91 overall. For now though, let's concentrate on the Champions League final between two Spanish outfits in England in the Wembley Stadium. Here we are then, Champions League final, Las Palmas, Real Madrid at Wembley Stadium. Real have still got a few known face, well-known faces like Hakimi, like Mbappe, like Courtois as well, Bellingham is there. But they've also got players like Ferreira, I've seen him, I've looked at him before to bring him in as a possible uh, region. But he's 90 rated, 20 years of age, he was much too, way too uh, expensive. Jelavic with a good pass into the open space for Aspria, who can run, he can run into open space, now Aspria passes it to Silva! Las Palmas are 1-0 up in the Champions League final against Real Madrid, the kings of Europe are behind. I immediately saw that when the pass went into the open space for Aspria, who could run, he's so fast, gives it very very calmly into Silva, who can even control the ball turn a little bit and then score into, into the open net. One in Las Palmas. Careful, this is Ferreira. Ferreira for Madrid, bringing the ball inside, but we defend well to Timba. This is Mbappe, we can't let him have this much space. It is Kylian Mbappe who can go through all the way and he scores the equaliser. 27 minutes in, Mbappe punishes our open defence. Loco loses out to Bellingham, who goes! A good save by our keeper. This is a corner kick for Vinicius Jr. Swinging it inside and they score! How didn't the goalkeeper keep that out? That is the mystery of the century. How did it, the goalkeeper keep that out? The goalkeeper was standing just right in front of it. And he didn't do anything. He just watched the ball fly into the back of that net. I mean, the corner kick was nice, but the goalkeeper has to get it there. Absolutely, it's his fault. Good interception by Timba. Now Aspria into Gravenberg. Great ball for Silva against Courtois. This is Moleiro. We are back into the game. Alberto Moleiro scores the goal. Two all. Great piece of play here. Aspria into Silva, who has the composure to see Moleiro in open space. Mbappe with a very deep free kick and it's careful, it's a good one, it's a good header and a good save this time by Kobel. Corner kick now again to Madrid and again we are in trouble but this time Kobel saves. This is Ferreira into Hakimi. 
Careful, Madrid on the charge. It's Mbappé who hits the post only here. We are so, so lucky this time. And now, if we play this right, we could go on a nice counter. It's Novak who has broken through. Novak, big chance, Silva! We are up for the second time in this game. After the 1 nil, we went 2 1 down. Now we are 3 2 up again. Silva with a nice tap in after a fantastic piece of play here by Novak, who made the run, got the ball, did very well in the penalty box, and that had the composure to pass it into the feet of Silva, who had to tap it home past Courtois 3 2. We have made a whole list of, of changes, starting with Guyu, who comes in for Silva, Pulisic gets in for Aspria, and then Elias Jelat for the yellow carded Jelavic, another yellow carded player as Sugo went out for Gilmore, and then Marmol finally comes in for Timba, and here come Madrid to Ferreira, still Ferreira going into the box, he's doubled up though, gives it into Bellingham, who looks on the back post, but he doesn't find his man. We are only seconds away from winning that UEFA Champions League, the first one in Las Palmas history. Can we make that happen? It seems as though it would be possible if the referee please could blow now, but I think he will let... No, he won't let Real Madrid have an attack. It is finished! Las Palmas, the champions of Europe, the best team in the world. We have rebuilt Las Palmas, we have finished this rebuild in the best possible way, defeating defeating the kings of Europe, doing it in a very, very tight way. 1-0 up, 2-1 down, 3-2, and then we have won it. The Yellow Canaries have done it. It was a long, long grinding rebuild, took us seven seasons, could have only taken us five, but we had a few results that went against us, especially in the Champions League. We've also won La Liga, the Copa del Rey. We've truly established Las Palmas as a big fish in Spanish and world football. But lads, if you enjoyed this rebuild with Las Palmas, then please consider dropping a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and tell me in the comments what other things you'd like to see next on this channel. I'm gonna let you enjoy the title celebrations as our captain, Zeno de Bast is going to lift that title. It's been Rebuild Sombrero. I'm out!